Hello, this is One Great Earth. My name is Dan. I hope you are well today. We got a lot to get into today, but first I would just like to thank you for being here and watching my content. I try to be as factual as I can. I do not engage in disinformation. The majority of everything that I have is going to be backed up with at least a peer-reviewed article if I get into it. Which, well, we're talking about wildfire smoke, which there's a lot of science on wildfire smoke, especially the last few years, which, uh, which will be for another day. Like, that'll be for a different day regarding looking at scientific articles regarding wildfire smoke and just how bad it is right now coming out of Canada. This is wildfire smoke progression from Monday to Wednesday. You can see it being rather thick, getting up there. Through the lakes. Pretty good ground to cover. This is reminiscent of remember last year when wildfire smoke from Canada blanketed the entire region of the United States, almost at one point of the Northeast and Midwest. But uh, if they're getting wildfire smoke in the United States and New Mexico, that's, that's pretty incredible. We can see here, this is a map of North America. You see Alaska up here with a lot of blazes occurring throughout Alaska. But what we're looking here, oh my God, shut that dog up. I think the dog stopped. Dog outside, they just went to stop barking. Very uh, much a nuisance. Bad parenting, bad dog parenting. Dog's 10 years old and it just won't stop yapping in the backyard. There's something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. That's the dog, the dog's screwed. So what we're seeing here is tremendous amounts of smoke built up. This carries off to the east. It's caught up in the current. It makes its way to the Labrador Sea. As we can see here with Buffalo, that's Fort Chippewain, near Wood Buffalo, Alberta, and uh, air quality index of 227. This is pretty unreal seeing these numbers already at this time of year crossing over into much of the United States as the smoke branches off from the northeast. It hits the Atlantic and mashes. we're looking at here 
it is a massive, massive buildup of smoke. This cannot be understated. Just how much smoke from the almost 1 million acres of wildfires that are burning now throughout much of Canada. This is the beta version, the beta version of the map we were just looking at but it does a better job at uh showing the smoke well i'll show you why under satellite imagery the smoke is there and it's really intense i can't say sound the alarms batten down the hatches there's no Pairing for smoke of this nature because nothing thrives under smoke. I started this channel last year and I went into a lot of detail tracking smoke like this, air quality, and you would not believe how quickly this smoke gets caught up now. It goes up in the air and it gets carried away for miles, hundreds of miles. Easy. It has to fall somewhere. Do you see places that light up? Air quality index sensors all over the United States. You're seeing it all throughout the Great Plains, the entire Great Plains, up until the Rockies, in the very much so Northwest. Well, not the Pacific Northwest. It's tremendous the amount of struggle there has to be be outside in this condition. There is no way of preparing for this amount of smoke as we're seeing here. All that gray that you see is smoke. It lapping at Greenland. Coming up into the Davy Strait. But I expect this I expect this uh, smoke is carried away in the northeast. And instead of our natural currents uh, making its way throughout the Pacific Northeast, or not Pacific Northeast, Atlantic Northeast. You see here, that smoke's gonna hit it, hit the sea, and it hit a pocket of air that's different temperature, and it's gonna, you're gonna see the smoke just split. Smoke interrupts cloud systems, it interrupts weather. It cuts through rain clouds and makes them expel out their entire contained uh, precipitation. You see, like, once the smoke cuts into a cloud that has a lot of rain into it, the clouds will adjust and try to uh, avoid collision. But the rain, that can't avoid collision, so the rain that's suspended right, that right there gets hit by all this particulate action happening in the air, and boom, it just lets out all this rain. And you'll see, like, oh, we haven't seen rain like this. I, we've been living here for 20, 30 years, 40 years. We've never seen rain like this before. Yeah, that's called climate change. Every time you hear somebody say that, it's a result of climate change. Climate change isn't making them say these things. These are the things that people are experiencing, factually objective experiences. Climate change is not only real, it exacerbates and amplifies all of our normal natural problems with nature that are hard to deal with, especially when it comes to deal with rain. We already had three dam failures in the last two months. There are thousands of dams out there that are not in the best shape, and it is very expensive to maintain a dam. So when they get these little grants, that money really just goes as much as it can to the, but it, you know, these dams, they need some major repairs all throughout the country. We've only covered 
uh, the, the, the two, I believe, the Rapidan Dam and the, uh, the other one in Nashville, I believe. What happens is, is you have the dam here, the solid structure of the metal and stone. Then you have the earthen part next to it that goes around, wraps around, and that gets blown out. You have a blowout of that dirt, of all that earth, and the water is just going to flow. And it's going to keep flowing and pushing it out, making the hole bigger. It's not going to be able to re be repaired. Maybe if you had the means to take a very large boulder and drop it there in its place, maybe that could work. But again, these are things that operations we really haven't seen. How do you even call that in? Is it county that takes care of it? Is it the dam operators and owners? It's pretty incredible. Now that we're seeing... Gotta let my cat out. Okay. Air quality is getting tremendously bad, severe. All this where you see is purple is some of the worst air quality right now on the planet, period. I'm not exaggerating. And if last year was frightening due to the amount of smoke that we were dealing with in the Midwest and the Northeast, it's going to happen again. Not a question. There's no if here. It's already happening. We're already seeing the smoke. It's pretty tremendous looking, especially it just hitting the southern tip of Greenland like that, smothering it with warmth and soot. It damages glaciers and ecosystems that wildfire normally would never touch. And that's going to expose more of Greenland, more ground, more earth that absorbs more heat. It's Now here is particulate matter, 2.5 and 10, uh, size of the particulates. Now we're seeing this massive amount in Alberta. There are many, many fires that are burning right now throughout the British Columbia. All this smoke. All this smoke gets pulled out northeast, and it gets caught in the jet stream if it's light enough. If it's not light enough, the wind will take it and it will aggressively shake shake it, causing the particulates to fall out in our layer. As soon as the particulates that get swept up into the system are light enough, you'll start seeing that smoke transverse as much as as much uh, space as it will give. So you'll see that big N fashion. You'll see a big N. Not to say there aren't other fires burning throughout Canada, but I know just recently we, we just did a video talking about the wildfires of Canada, especially the ones in British Columbia in particular. But Alberta as well is seeing a nasty spate of uh, a sudden spate of smoke. 
Now we know it's smoke. We can go here. And here is the continental United States scale. Here is California. Right here. Canada. This is the area that we're looking at. This is radar. Now the cat wants in. Mine cat. He knows the doorknob is the way to get in, so he just that's the doorknob. That's the doorknob. That's the doorknob. This one right here. Protect your pets, wildfire smoke. It's the people that have a hard time protecting themselves. You know, you have seniors, you have elderly, you have uh, people that are have uh, illness already pre-existing. Smoke can make that worse. It can make everything worse because nothing thrives under smoke. Everything chokes it is not something that we can adapt to without the right equipment and technology. Being able to filter out the smoke is going to be a great luxury going forward as these wildfires have no end in sight. And they probably never stopped burning from last year. Zombie fires, they called for the fires that you think you extinguished from the previous season suddenly just erupt again in the same area. Maybe these fires that were put down last year's season didn't go down all the way. There's no telling how deep a wildfire actually burns. Is it just the root that burns? Trees that ignite? Or is it far more reaching of a uh, like peat, you get these giant layers of different kind of material. And uh, peat fire is massive fire that I can't imagine. But these are also dangerously close to uh, Alberta's oil sands. So it's very telling the area that is seeing the most amount of pollution is due to wildfire. So they're suspending operations. They're doing... A lot of different things, but here, here is here is uh, North America. Areas to pay attention to, like up here, down here, the smoke. is visible to the naked eye on a satellite. That's how built up this smoke has become. No joke. This is very serious. This isn't like calling out, you know, tornado. This isn't calling out bad weather. This is a front of smoke. This is, I would say it's unprecedented, but since I covered a lot of it last year, when my on YouTube, when I was on YouTube, I had about 6,500 subscribers on YouTube. Real proud of that. But YouTube is making it very difficult to upload anything, to go live, saying that I'm um, um, gearing systems. I can't remember what it's actually called. Uh, they claimed I'm um, a company posing as an individual. Something of the sort now. I can't remember. But they took away my ability to add for support on my Google account. That's how just like they're not going to take it. Now, I barely swear on my channel. And I cover mainly climate change and uh, sometimes the weather, not really the weather. No, I could. It'd be interesting. But what I do is just go from country to country telling the weather. They already have all that. People be able to tell them locally what's better. Now, this is insane here. Wildfire here, Jasper.
That is a huge plume of smoke. That's what we're dealing with here. We're not looking at just your every average wildfire that burns for 100 acres or 1,000 acres even. You're seeing fires that are burning for 10,000 acres, 20,000 acres. You're seeing fires rip smoke out of the ground. There's no telling how far a wildfire can go. But you can tell just how much damage is done by how desolate everything becomes. But it's not just the size of the wildfires. It's they combine, they merge, and they put out a huge amount of smoke that gets into the uh, air circulate the air system circulates between Canada and the United States again. It's already happening, already trading smoke. And there are already pretty big wildfires that are happening all across the area. Um, see here is all of Canada. Let me go back to the image here. You can see just the amount of smoke that is visible on satellite here. This is bad. We're seeing some of the worst air quality on the planet right now on record. And this is a big deal. If you have pets, if you have children, this is going to be a problem again. If you remember last year, kids weren't even allowed to go outside. That can happen again very soon. I'm saying that it will happen, but I'm not going to give an ETA or a forecast. But the smoke's already there, it's on its way, and plenty of more smoke is being produced at rapid rates. So here, this is the Federal Aviation Administrator, Administration uh, weather cams. The kind of scene, the uh, kind of scenes that you would get under smoke. Much uh, particulation in the atmosphere. You get a, a laser sun. This focal point beam of the sun going across the land at record temperatures, record wildfires. That sun is so bright. It looks like it would just cause ignition to materials just the way just it looking at something wrong. We go here for all these cameras. It is potentially smoke here. Clear day look like. Yep. Just push play here and play. Go back. Thing is a storm. be wildfire smoke on the horizon because it's huge it's everywhere it wouldn't just be you know in one area one of these one of these cameras possibly just looks like you know the, the camera lens gets hit with a bunch of material there are insects on the camera here Not seeing not seeing patterns of smoke. This could be weather or it could be smoke. But I don't see any rain. A 
Okay, that's raindrops. Oh, could be higher up already. We know it's there, we know it's present, and we know that it's low enough to trigger air quality alerts in so many different provinces. All over all these straight all over Canada. Weather. Make our way hard to tell by looking at these cameras. Could be dust in the distance. You could also look at areas that have mountain ranges. Very bright sun. Yeah, take a look here. Here is Canada. South of Yellowknife, getting into the north, almost to the Northwest Territories. Almost 2,500 parts per. Parts per million volume, 2,500 is pretty bad. And this is being pulled like a string. Yeah. And you just pull all the way, eventually makes its way to Greenland, to the United States, over the different areas of the Midwest, Central Plains is being hit hardest right now, but that smoke will only build up more further because the wildfires aren't going anywhere. They're fighting wildfires in the wilderness. And they're not... Let me try one more thing. Nitrous. Refresh so you can see everything. Particulate matter. Uh, matter. 0.5 aerosolization um, see the patterns here of the, the fires and the smoke that's coming out of British Columbia and it's heading just it's shared all throughout the rest of Canada almost depending on how you look at the smoke what's in it you can really get a good idea of how far it's traveling. This, this smoke can travel to Europe. Sulfur, surface, dust, and carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide. Drought. Yep, and it's just in the areas where it's a drought as well. And uh, you can look back to think that is it the smoke that's ruining the moisture in the soil? That's making the trees sick? Trees die? Many parts of the region, especially like in uh, Tasmania right now, we have uh, ginger syndrome taking over many of their euclids. Many of the trees are falling. Big story coming out of 
Tasmania that we've uh, that we went over before in a previous episode. I should start naming the beginnings of these episodes so it's not just always the same title over and over. Better way to better organize. So it's like I'll name the stream, the first part of the stream after like the biggest story I'm going to get into today, which of course is the wildfire Canadian uh, smoke issues that we're seeing all over. See nitrogen dioxide here, seeing pretty incredible levels. Same area by Wood Buffalo National Park. Series of much uh, smoke and disaster. Rampaging fires that seem to have no end. This is the fire danger for today. Even though that it's not the most extreme in the north, northern territories, east of Yellowknife, fire is uh, really exacerbated by just having no cloud coverage and Like clover coverage is smoke, which causes this magnification of solar rays. And you get into a lot more smoky atmosphere. Look at this fire up here. You get into lower parts of the atmosphere. And no matter how much cloud seeding you do, you can't compete with the smoke just eliminating any kind of benefit a cloud seeding could possibly do because it's going to rip moisture, cause it the clouds to drop all the moisture that's built up in them. It's just like just putting a knife right for something that has liquid in it. It's going to leak out everywhere in the fall. And that's when you'll get people, they'll say that they've never seen rain like this in their entire life, however long it might have been at the, until that point. But it's it's happening most places around the entire world. You're not alone. Seeing that uh, rain builds up quickly and then falls, we're interrupting the rain cycle. So we're at a we're at a point in time where we're not sure we're not sure what is going to be still around by the next year. I I remember like. One million acres being a lot, being significant. We can just see the smoke just linger over the area and these. Two wildfires. You have all this smoke already that's traveling and smoke sticky. Smoke will stick smoke. Smoke will follow the leader. As soon as there is a cycle, smoke can go in channel and join it. It doesn't have to mix. What's going to happen is the particulates are going to fall out. Particulate matter that's being held up and suspended in the air by the currents that's light enough to be carried away. We're in trouble. We are in great trouble. We're seeing more smoke than I anticipated that's built up north of Saskatchewan. 
Saskatchewan. I said it right the first time. Anyway, all that smoke from Northwest Territories to Fort Smith to Saskatoon, to it thins out some, but it's still there over the continental United States and the area right here. Yep, come back up. This is extremely worrying. You know, somebody with asthma, breathing issues, you know, this can really cause a bad day for real. It's not to the levels of where we saw it last year in the United States, but we expect it to be so. If not most of Canada are getting sick. Wildfire smoke is building up again. And it's a uh, great vital importance that we keep our eyes and ears to the ground. As if one day we wake up and there is so much smoke outside, it looks like fog. You can't breathe that. You have to stay indoors. You have to seek shelter. That's terrifying to think about if one of these giant smoke clouds descend on a population. Drops down into Boston, Detroit, into Milwaukee. These are things that we saw before, but we're seeing play out again. Smoke is building up. Smoke is visible on satellite. The fires are still burning all over the place in uh a bird out of British Columbia. Especially this right here. This on this, uh, the Mount of the Rocks right here, the Rockies right here. Tremendous fire just burning. It's getting ripped out by this storm. That's just curling. That smoke will infect the rest of the, the cloud cycle though, and Make its rain drop. It just unzips these clouds. You get this dry dead air after that. Deeply worrying. So this is why we try to do these things. That we look at wildfires like this. These are all wildfires that you're seeing on the screen as the satellite goes over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, at least nine wildfires present in this image alone. A lot of smoke, it's a lot of bad stuff. And um it's happening now. This isn't a month from now. Smoke's coming. It is a problem before last year in the same way it will be a problem again this year smoke will close down a lot of parts of society where it descends especially in the northeast as the smoke that comes around from the midwest meets with the smoke that uh, came around the north bay northeast bay We're in trouble. These wildfires are massive, they're numerous, and they are only exacerbated by the amount of smoke that they're producing. But it's not just that you're having these out of control fires burning all across Canada. You have millions of tons of smoke that's getting produced, that's going into the atmosphere, that's replacing weather, that's causing us, forcing weather to take evasive action. The smoke does a lot of crazy things whenever it's the, this amount. And forcing weather's hand, probably one of the craziest things. Slices right through, tries to, and see the clouds, they'll move. 
any kind of oh, any kind of rain any kind of weather pattern just gets wrecked so any kind any area that was looking to get a nice little rainstorm might not get it now because you know 100 miles to the west of it clouds opened up even though it's projected to go over the area then it's changed see just how dangerous this becomes I talk about climate change I talk about smoke replacing weather and then there's just nothing but smoke in the atmosphere there's nothing but wildfire smoke sending into a city seeing it again happening right now it is okay to be worried about it you should be worried about it because there's no way of adapting to smoke no way of thriving under smoke pets birds people children you know, all these have the same weakness as smoke is they can't breathe it choke but what's what's the deal with all this smoke in the, in the northwest territories to british columbia especially the massive massive wildfire that's in alberta right now there are huge implications of environmental concern when it comes to the amount of smoke that we're seeing being ripped out and forced into air cycle it is very unfortunate to see North of Manitoba as well. I just I can't believe that these uh, we're seeing wildfires of this nature already. It is concerning. We can't get this wild back. You understand? When it's gone, it's lost forever. No getting it back. These areas that are burning in these large. Uh, Swaths can be unending fires, unending fires, a plague, smoke transmits the sickness all over the place. Disease can run in the smoke. It's not good. Not good. We could be seeing a lot of detrimental health effects result to wildfire smoke in human beings and not even know it I thank you for watching so far I do appreciate it I hope that this information is useful to someone I'm not trying to be an alarmist I'm not trying to make people afraid. I'm trying to make people aware of what's happening, what's going on. I would, if you are scared, afraid, or worried, or even just a little bit concerned, that's very much so okay. Because you have trauma probably from last year when the smoke descended on top. Uh, onto most of the United States in the Northeast and Midwest. It's okay for that to be a trigger. Is this smoke rich or poor? You were in it. It didn't matter. There's very few times when a billionaire can be on the same, uh, I'm sorry, I'm digressing a little bit. People are suffering, animals are struggling due to wildfire and wildfire smoke, especially the wildfire smoke. It's just unending, aggressive, and uh, very toxic.
Use the beam, see the light, just hold the point. As it just pushes away the clouds. More time. Cloud coverage is especially important in North, in Canada's region. Cloud coverage is deeply important. Without that cloud coverage and it being replaced by smoke, we're going to see absence of weather. It is really bizarre to see it play out. But it's precisely what happens in these areas in the Northeast. New York might suddenly get six inches of rain in under two hours. Talking about consequences. Immediate, very short, very in the near future consequences due to climate change. Directly due to climate change. Due to the amount of clouds that are in the atmosphere. It's replaced by the smoke. It's pushed away by the smoke. Because uh, smoke will follow smoke and stick to other smoke and pull at other smoke. It acts like it's a bunch of hooks. Smoke is very simple to understand at, uh, with just those um, attributes. Now, when smoke starts replacing weather that was necessary to help put out fires that was in a plan wait for the fire to be hit with rain instead the wildfire smoke unzips that cloud st structure and all that rain comes out miles away these are very crucial moments in wildland firefighting just how much and burn how much smoke is being put out you just don't know that this could be a tree it could be a series of trees or it could be from surface 10 feet down into the ground that's burning these are just really wild numbers that can change the landscape and scar it for a, for a very long time get areas too where there's wildfire and the land doesn't heal. The burn scar still remains, allowing for flooding. Because when the ground is too hard, and too burnt, too tight to absorb water, it's not permeable. So it's going to just flash flood right over that burn scar. So if you get an area that just happens to be a burn scar, where that smoke is going to be lingering, another cloud is going to be near it, and unzip just like that again and you're going to see a flash flood. The water doesn't really get to where it needs to go. You understand? It's, it's sick. What we call climate change. That's why I operate this channel in the hope that just at least one person, this helps understand how complicated how many factors climate change plays into our everyday lives. It's not just something simple that you can just flick on a switch or turn off a switch and say climate change. We're in trouble. And this is already just uh, July, the end of July. We're seeing smoke like this. We're already seeing wildfires all over Canada. This is not good. Canada needs cloud coverage desperately right now. Because this sun is lethal. The way that the axis sits, the sun hits, will be tremendously brighter and focused compared to like hitting the equator. Hello. 
lot of cloud structures. This weather. difference in cloud coverage and smoke smoke you'll get a red sun and that's because the red photons that travel to our planet from the sun are that much longer than blue photons they wriggle through and that's why you'll see a red light in the absence of clouds but in the inclusion of smoke it's a very dangerous sun As we can see here, the sun looks normal, the sun looks natural. That is a nice shot of a sun. Got a bit of a light beam here that runs the focal point, the focal point of the pair of the center of light. Is that large beam that you see here here uh that focus light being picked up that goes straight up and down in these images because it's recording light and that's what's hitting the camera dead on in the middle because there's always going to be half that's going to pick up really cool sometimes it's a lot greater don't, um, it's the kind of sun that we expect to see wildfires, we expect to see disasters. Because the sun's bright and powerful, and it's just beaming down pain all day and night. The moon is a reflection of the sun. So if a really hot night is followed by a really warm morning into a hot day, and that could really mess with people. I could throw people's equilibrium completely out of out of whack. So it's also illness. Just how much are people willing to take off due to climate change? Are the roads flooded to the point that you can't get to work? Are you going to take a day off work because of flooding? These are real questions that we're asking now. Is uh, it's tremendous. We look for a red sun, we look for the smoke for gluten signatures. Sun like brooms all this back. Possibly bright, stellar. Looks dirty, but I don't think it's smoke, but it looks very bright. Hyper focused it's beams, centermost uh, light that hits the camera high on a laser beam. It's uh, it's sunlight, like it's being broken up a lot, could be due to pollution here.
could be a dirty camera. Like this looks dirty. I'm not saying the location, I'm saying the air. This looks a different kind of gray. And we know the smoke is here. Dang. We know the smoke is there. We know where to look. And I don't know if there's a better camera than these uh, Federal Aviation Administration uh, cameras. Usually be able to pick up smoke, pick up a dust storm, pick up a firestorm, pick up something. We have these areas of great interest where there is no cloud coverage and the sun you see just beams down without any reflection, reflection, about an ability to stop this from happening. You can just imagine what this is going to do to everything underneath half of the sunlight. Just a massive bath of light. Very penetrating UV spectrum. We're seeing pretty wild, wild sights. This is why cloud coverage is important. You get a sun that literally cooks the ground, cooks the trees. It warms the ambient temperature of an area an unsafe level. You look dirty because of the camera, not because of the gear. Where's that sun at? Fine. Like the sun right there perfectly in the middle. It does look smoky and I you know, obviously I, I keep saying it, it wouldn't surprise me to see smoke. What would surprise me is to see a lot of smoke. To the point that we're able to see it like this. You see in the mountain ranges behind it, like a fog, but it's not fog. It's not rain, it's not clouds, smoke. I mean, we know it's there. It's in huge quantities all over Canada, stretching across from coast to coast. Very big deal, very serious. And again, if you had experience with the smoke from last year, it's going to be largely the same this time around. You're going to have huge presence of smoke on the playground. You're not going to be able to have children playing. You're not going to walk your dog. Because it's dangerous. People that are made to live outside, that are made to live outside, especially in times of such crisis, and FEMA isn't declaring smoke a natural disaster yet. Smoke should be a disaster. The kind of smoke that we're seeing uh, heading our way, it, it's massive. There's no way to understate the severity of the amount of smoke that we're seeing coming out of Canada. Very annoying too. All these fires the fires just keep growing. They just keep getting larger, larger, to the point that how would you realistically fight a fire that's longer than you can maintain your eye without the curvature of the earth obscuring the rest of the fire? I'm talking about some really big blazes, not some that you would see anywhere else probably in the world. Canada right now is being torched.
Which by a very unforgiving son. A lot of clouds here. Tightening up. Sun's coming. Frame. A healthy sun right there. You would see red. You wouldn't see bright colors of the sun. You wouldn't see those rays. Beams of light. Because pollution would be obscuring blue photons that's exactly what we're looking for something like this actually yeah possible smoke would be in this image because judging by radar and everything that we're looking at in images it's widespread it's huge it's not just in one region or one province alone this is a canada-wide problem already it's becoming a national problem international Greenland you see that this this Sun doesn't look natural in these images it looks like it's being obscured by pollution not not enough frames to really go by that's that's a lot of what we're looking at we're looking for areas where the sun looks sick where it's just this red beam instead of the bright golden hue this could be smoke here for all we know like you know you scanner I remember those from back in the day, scan of paper. That, such a strong beam. Feels distorted like the air is sick. But it should be, that's what we're seeing. that air rounds all over the place the vulgar the amount of smoke that we're seeing right here All the smoke right now. This is a big deal. I don't know how many other sources to throw in that this is a problem, it's happening now, and uh. 
you have to prepare ourselves for however long the smoke could be present. Remember, nothing thrives under smoke and there's no way to adapt. One system, the one thing that will uh, be detrimental going forward, you see how horrible it is right here. The area is severe, dangerous quality with Buffalo National Park and adjacent areas in Canada, throughout Canada. And these two, like, massive fires that are burning. Uh, are pumping out tons of smoke, getting put up and it's getting into this vicious cycle. here is where this ripping into the Pacific Northwest leave ripping as you can see I'm gonna carry it out north Gatchewan east out to the Hudson Bay slow cycle a giant gear that sits underneath the south of the Hudson Bay that's just pushing back air that uh, accumulates over time we're seeing It's really bad. Wouldn't be surprised if there is a very serious fire burning there. I think I talked about wildfires pretty extensively. Well, not the wildfires, the smoke. Hour and 14 minutes? Wow. Rising. I thank you, even if you are watching this on replay, either on Twitch or YouTube, know that I am live on Twitch going forward, and I upload the stream on the YouTube afterwards. It is due because, due to, YouTube has made it increasingly difficult me to continue my work primarily on YouTube because they banned my ads account due to shocking content which they'll I couldn't get anything about it with shocking about the content I try very hard not to swear there might have been one video that I had ads that I had through like two bucks on something and uh, they came back saying that this ad it violates our ad policy and there's no no road to appeal so I after some 6,500 subscribers on YouTube I'm on Twitch now you could very much so I'd appreciate it if you click follow on Twitch, even if you are watching a replay, I'd greatly appreciate it. Every single follower I see that increases motivates me to put out more climate related media like this, where I go over the uh, day's news pretty much of where we're at. 
the human experiment. We're seeing too much get in our way, though. Like this amount of smoke heading into Greenland. Not good. This isn't good for anyone. And nothing, nothing thrives under smoke. One second. Fifty six year old hiker in Utah is at least a fifth person to die in state and national parks due to heat. A woman was hiking on a trail near Whale Creek State Park on Sunday when she became distressed due to not having enough water. She, she responded to a call for help and found the woman unresponsive. Life-saving measures were performed, but unfortunately, those efforts were not enough to save her. Very dangerous. Please take care in this just very dangerous heat. Being triple digits, any humidity gets in there is going to be... You know, we're just one power outage away from seeing a mass casualty event. Probably going to be in Texas. Dehydrated. The day before she was found, authorities discovered the bodies of Wisconsin residents. Albino, Herrera, Espinoza, Espinoza, age two, and his daughter, Beatriz Herrera, 23, as young. Unforgiving punishment of the son right now. As it's beating on you, you have to drink water, even if you think that you're not feeling it. You have to consume water. A regular pace. Heat builds up if you, if you let it. You have to actively be profoundly uh, and you're fighting back against heat. It isn't just staying out of the heat, being in a cool building. It can creep up on you. After a long day outside, you go inside indoors. You're out of the sunlight some reason you start having a heat stroke because it builds up like that in your system because eventually that is going to do damage to you no way to measure it but we do know that it builds itself up inside somebody there's no immunity to it it makes everybody sick no one is immune to it you can't you could probably adapt to it a little bit, but the human body at a certain temperature and humidity fails. No way that you can train that in a sauna. No condition that you can train that. You can train like frigid, frozen conditions, but uh, training in like really hot, horrible conditions, it's just as bad as the real thing that you would be doing. Because it's 110, 115 degrees. The heat index on the rock that you're standing on is 140. So you're looking at you know, your shoes melting, possibly. I've seen videos of people frying eggs on the concrete. And on one in front of them, put an egg in it. And then put an egg on the, uh, crack an egg on the street. Concrete itself, the pavement. And uh, they both cooked. That was Arizona. 
we're looking at um We're looking at proportionate Okay, this is an uh, this is a story of tragedy of loss. Couple found dead in lifeboat. A British-Canadian couple who were attempting to sail across the Atlantic had been found dead on an island off the east coast of Canada. Brett Clibbery, 70, and his wife Sarah Packwood, 60, had been sailing on their 42-foot sailboat, the SV Theros, but the bo their bodies were found in a lifeboat that washed up on Sable Island, Nova Scotia, according to a statement from the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Why were they in a lifeboat? They left on June 11th and were reported missing on June 18th. And their bodies were not found until July 10th. Why did they get on a life raft and uh, a lifeboat? Why did they get on a lifeboat from their craft? And did they intend to wash up on that island? They're not going to take... A life raft, just as a just a, a leisure voyage to a nearby island. Now that's something bad happened here. Couple met by chance at a bus stop in London in 2015 when Clibbery was in Britain, donated kidney to his sister. He told the Guardian newspaper in an article published in 2020. The pair met every day for the few weeks after their first encounter. Before Clivery helped Packwood to care for her dying mother, she looked after him after his kidney operation. They stayed in touch, and uh, he took her on his fir uh, her first ever yacht trip and proposed to her in the main cabin of the boat. Very, very tragic. You see these currents up here? On down. Not able to make its journey. And like stuff like this for a while now. It looks like this could be the breakout year for consequences due to this um, tidal current.
I just cover it up. Melting ice is slowing Earth's spin, shifting its axis and even influence its inner core. So it's not just the currents that we're seeing, the tidal currents that we're seeing change. We're seeing Earth change. We're seeing ice melt, fresh body water of ice melting into the sea, popping it up. What a lot of devastating consequences due to climate change. Climate change is altering the earth to its literal core. This is talking about how there is a feedback loop affecting the fluids that move around in earth's molten core compared to the surface of the planet. Why, when I say that nothing man made can alter weather, because the weather is already powerful enough to make these elaborate strides distance as a category five hurricane. Seeing as seawater, as the oceans warm. Water expands as it warms. You get a lot of sea level rise just by the water warming up. Crucial. Because this can be several inches very quickly. Because certain zones in the ocean that were cold become hot and it's not transferring, it's not transferring the layer somewhere else. It's just becomes this huge warm dead zone. So, ice melting of the ice sheets reach an equilibrium. In general, the speed of Earth's spin depends on the shape of the planet and where its mass is distributed. The factor is governed by several countering forces. So if humans continue to pollute the planet with carbon emissions, the influence of sea loss overtake the moon's effect. If you want to fly a new mission to Mars, for example, we really need to know how the state of the Earth is exactly in space. If that changes, we might actually make a navigation error or a mistake. A one meter change to Earth's axis, for example, could mean a spacecraft misses its target by 100 or 1,000 meters when it reaches Mars. Uh, Multiple discoveries are almost a rule in science. This is yet another case. Feedback loop between the surface processes and the inner core of the Earth. We can around with forces beyond our understanding right now. Crucial. 
to understand climate change, to understand melting of ice, fresh water, ice melt is becoming more rampant, larger. Amount of glaciers are breaking off of Antarctica and sailing away. Massive icebergs, 80 kilometers in width. Massive. These things are going to spin, they're going to float. We don't know how tall they are. We just know how wide they are. These icebergs can be any amount of depth. We don't know. It's difficult to imagine trying to measure an iceberg from top to bottom about having some kind of way of slowing the iceberg down while it travels. Otherwise, it's going to move at any kind of speed that's going to be faster than it takes, that it would take, like, for a, uh, a drone, underwater drone, go underwater. Let's see if you can see the bottom of the glacier. Sorry, iceberg. Helium Reservoir in Minnesota is even more mind-boggling than we thought, new data suggests. So uh, seismic data from a 0.7 mile long sweep just outside of Babbitt suggests that recently discovered reservoir is larger than initial estimates indicated, which has resources, resource exploration company, Pulsar Helium, and its potential client jumping for joy. Let's see, the previously discovered pocket helium between 500, excuse me, 530 meters to 670 meters below the surface. Laboratory tests in June placed helium concentrations in the reservoirs between 8.7% and 14.5%, topping previous maximum estimates of 12.4% and 13.8%. Concentrations are the highest the industry has ever seen. To put those figures into context, any helium deposit with a concentration above 0.3% is considered economically significant. So this is massive. This is really massive. Despite being the second most abundant gas in the universe, helium is a scarce resource on Earth, forming only through nuclear fusion and a radioactive decay of uranium and thorium. The gas is in high demand because it forms an essential cooling component in rockets, nuclear reactors, and diagnostic metal equip equipment, such as magnetic resonance imaging MRI machines. Pretty dire out there. Helium shortages. Massive.
So this is one more time. Reservoir is between 8.7% and 14.5%. And any helium deposit with a concentration of 0.3% is considered economically significant. So yeah, Minnesota is going to have a big change, big change. Much focus will be had in Minnesota. Major player in the global helium market. A post fire nightmare in New Mexico. Eight floods in four weeks. We do so. A scenic town of nearly 8,000 in southern New Mexico is at the mercy of an enduring double barreled disaster. You haven't been following uh Rui Duso Rui Doso was uh evacuated most of it due to all fires merging to the pathway of the city. Now the fire is pained. You have the burn scars as we mentioned previously. As you have these burn scars that Act as hydrophobic land. Water just beats right off it. It's pretty, pretty incredible just how quickly this escalates from wildfire to flood due to the wildfire. As the land burns, tightens up, causes a great deal of uh of the land and become hydrophobic another way to describe it it just washes right over the land and just feeds on through
15,000 gallon sewage leak triggers closure at two LA County beaches. Parts of Venice Beach and Doc Wheeler State Beach are closed after 15,000 gallons of sewage leaked into the ocean near Marina del Rey over the weekend, the Los Angeles County Public Health Department said. Beachgoers are being advised to stay out of the water one mile north and one mile south of Bologna Creek until tests there over, there over 48 hours show the water quality meets health standards. First test was scheduled for Monday, according to the health department. On Saturday, a broken water main pushed sand into the city water line, causing sewage to back up and discharge into a nearby storm drain. By the time LA Sanitation Environment alerted the county health department of the issue, sewage had been flowing for almost two hours, officials said. Terrible to see, terrible to read, and uh, very foul. Sea level rise causes local extinction of rare cactus, an omen for conservation efforts. The Key Largo, Key Largo tree cactus is the first locally extinct species due to sea level rise, but it won't be the last. This year, beautiful. Now about to be extinct. Ongoing six mass extinction driven driven by human activity and the burning of fossil fuels. Period. Is a massive loss of wildlife ecosystems running out of time at it running out of time to figure out ways to fight back against climate change Said we're just making things worse. It's not getting any better. It's not going to get any better unless we actually do something about it. Period. What will we do? It is hard to look over information not just consider it grim all the time. That's why we're doing this. 
is due to the fact that we're in trouble. There might be a time where renewable energies will be at an all-time high. And uh, our carbon levels are at justifiable levels. But we have ocean trawling where we take these giant nets with weights on the sides and we drag it across the ocean floor. This causes a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide that spent decades floating to the bottom of the ocean, picks up into the air, into the atmosphere. We are in trouble. It is uh, endemic to the Keys, as it is found nowhere else. So they hope that it can be revived. They hope that efforts will be able to bring it back, but no extinction is pretty hard to come back from. Now we uh, talked previously about the uh, Euclid's, uh, Euclid's Tasmania or being, getting sick from ginger syndrome. Their bark peels off like a banana skin. Different part of the uh, world. That's experiencing tree death and a large scale. Half of Q tree species at risk of death owing to climate crisis, study found. Botanical gardens lost 400 trees during the 2022 drought, prompting research into potential loss in coming decades. More than half of the tree species at Kew's Royal Botanical Gardens are at risk of death because of climate breakdown. The finding that half of Q's 11,000 trees are at risk has led the organization to write a succession plan to replace some of the trees that are likely to die as climate breaks down. This has implications for British natives such as English oak, common beech, silver birch, and 
holly, which could be at risk in areas of the UK with a similar climate Q. Vulnerable trees Q has chosen to replace include those that are drought tolerant. Okay. Hi, thank you for joining me. If you haven't seen already, I have a Patreon account. I would like to give a shout out to my headliners. I would like to thank John. I would like to make thank Michonne, Sarah. Thank you so much for your support. It means a lot to me. As of right now, I have a $3 a month subscription. If you find what I do here, you appreciate it. I would also, I would appreciate it if you were to go to my Patreon and click at least a free membership tier. It's the very minimum. I would greatly appreciate it. IVF help for wild rhinos from Zoo Cousins. Collecting eggs from a two-ton rhino. Far from easy, but the procedure has been carried out in zoos across Europe in a bid to help the wild population. The size of this thing. Massive.
researchers announced that they have achieved world's first rhino IVF pregnancy. IVF stands for in vitro fertilization. A southern white uh, number in their thousands, but it wasn't always that way. At the end of the 19th century, the species was almost wiped out through hunting and land clearance. Some estimates suggest there were as few as 20 animals left. Rhino IVF is still in its infancy. A calf has not yet been born from the technique, but the team is building a store of embryos made with eggs and sperm collected from across Europe, and the hope is that they can one day be implanted into surrogates. Back in the enclosure, not long after the procedure has been completed, Santa wakes up. She's a little unsteady on her feet at first, but once everyone is sure she's okay, she heads outside. Keeper calls her name and she soon strolls over for a gentle scratch behind her ears. Although she doesn't know it, a few eggs that she's donated could make a big difference being the survival of future generations of southern white rhinos. I thank, I thank you again for joining me here. If you haven't already, I appreciate it greatly. Click follow if you're even watching this on replay. Please go to twitch.com slash one great earth and click the follow button. Appreciate it greatly. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Please, if you haven't already, click that follow button or subscribe if you're watching us on YouTube. Even though I am live on Twitch, only Twitch now.
Uh, eventually, I would like to look into Restream to uh, stream on both Twitch and YouTube at the same time. But as of right now, YouTube is making it complicated. Complicated to continue on YouTube as, as the primary source of this uh, live stream. Thank you very much. Please take care.